What is going on you guys? Tommy here and I'm going to be doing for you one of my favorite mixes and one of my favorite things to do and to talk about and that is mixing Tangiers and Alfakar. Today I'm going to be smoking Tangiers Cocoa mixed with Alfakar Orange. Uh, one of my all-time favorite mixes, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but I'm not usually a real big mix guy. I generally uh, like to just smoke a single flavor. Um, but this is one of my absolute favorite mixes. It's always a go-to for me. So uh, let's get to the pack. Okay, so here we go. First things first, let's open up the Tangiers. I do not have very much left, but that's okay. It's gonna end up being more than it looks like. And I most likely am gonna end up using all of it though. But that's what we're doing. I am packing the magma bowl, but uh, this method will work with any, any quality bowl. Um, so we're gonna grab some Tangiers, put it in there. Again, this is Tangier's Cocoa. Now, Tangier's Cocoa is a really interesting flavor. It's it's a chocolate, obviously, um, but it's it's not a super, super sweet chocolate. Um, I wouldn't say that it's bitter, like a like a cooking chocolate, but it's it's very it's very similar to like a hot cocoa. So if you can think of what that is, it's not it's not as intense of a of a sweetness as you might expect from a chocolate flavor. So I'm gonna call that about enough. It is, it's it's one of those things. So I say that it's not as intense, but it's actually a very intense flavor. Um, it has quite a lot of flavor to it, and it is definitely chocolate. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's just not as, it's not as sweet. It doesn't, it doesn't taste and smoke as, as sugary um, as some other, some other brands chocolate are out there. So that's about the amount of cocoa that I like to use. I could probably get a little bit more out of this box if I had to, but I don't, and I don't feel like doing that. It takes too much time. So I'm gonna use about this much cocoa. It's a little bit less than half. Uh, as I mentioned, it is a, a pretty strong flavor, and uh, when you're mixing tangiers and a, uh, and a blonde, one of the things you need to think about is the way that the flavors are going to uh, interact with each other. If I use too much more, you may not really taste very much of the orange at all. So now I'm grabbing some AF orange and I'm just sprinkling it in. And I am packing this bowl to use the Lotus with, so I, uh, I am going to underpack it a little bit. Um, compared to if I was using foil most likely. However, with this bowl, I've actually been enjoying it better, uh, slightly underpacked for everything. But even with any other bowl, uh, this is going to look a little bit underpacked if you're normally a, a foil smoker. Um, and that's because I like to I like to make room for the nubs. I don't like to make contact with my, with my Lotus. So this is what it looks like before I mix it up. I'm gonna mix it up. I'm not gonna make you guys see that. I'll be right back with the bowl with mixed up tobacco. And voila, so this is what it looks like. I have not packed it down yet. Um, I just just dropped, I mixed it all up and dropped it all in. You can see what the consistency is. And now let me actually pack it down. Now I'm not gonna pack it as tight as you would if it was just Tangiers. Um, I'm gonna basically be doing it in, in between like your normal AF pack and um, a semi-dense. So I'm not gonna have it super, super dense. Um, but it's a little bit, a little, you know, definitely more dense than what you would for your, for your average if it was just blonde, but I'm definitely not going to be RV Palmer in it. So I, I would call that really more of a semi-dense pack. And, uh, that's about how I, how I like to pack when I have my mix like this. And like I said, I am going to be using the Lotus and the Lotus will sit on the rim of the bowl like that. And I have it at the right height so that it looks to me like the uh, nubs are just about making contact but not actually making contact with my shisha. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for there. So let's, uh, let's get the coals are almost done. Let's get some coals on here. Let me get a hook out and I'll be right back. All right. So I am smoking out of my B2 F22. Uh, it's B2's newest model. Um, can't really see the color too good because of the pictures in the background, but it's actually a one of one custom colorway. So if you like this one, Tough shit, but 
I have I have the calls in the Lotus. I have three uh, prestige jumbo flats uh, in the Lotus. Uh, they've been in there for probably six or seven minutes. I've taken a few pulls. Uh, it's still not pumping out big clouds yet. It's still heating up. But it's getting going. Um, cloud output, as I continue to smoke, the cloud should get a little bit a little bit bigger. I do have the lid on and I have the vents closed um, so that it can continue to heat up, but the, the cloud output should continue to get bigger. I, I don't like to um, preheat my Lotus. Uh, you're not supposed to. I know some of you still do, and it's I guess it's okay as long as you don't overheat it. Um, to me, it's just not worth the risk. I'd rather just wait a few extra minutes. And when I say overheated, I want to explain what I mean by that, guys, because there's there's some HMDs out there that are fine to preheat, and you could leave on your burner for as long as you want. With uh, the original Lotus, um, you can melt that. So you can overheat it and melt it, but that would take a lot. I mean, you're going to have to almost forget about it or like leave it on the whole time that your coals are heating up. Um, a lot of people I know will throw their, th throw their HMD on the burner when the coals are you know, about halfway done or so, so that it's on for a few minutes, so that when you put it on the bowl, it's sizzling already. Um, I also don't really like to do that and don't like that method. Um, the reason being is if you overheat it, and I don't mean heat it to the point where you're boiling the metal, but if you overheat it just to the point that it gets hotter than what it's going to get when you put your coals in it, you're gonna have a really bad session. You're gonna scorch it at the very beginning and it's gonna be really, really hard to recover from. So. I really, really don't recommend doing that. I do do it sometimes with my Phoenix because the Phoenix can take it. Um, but I'm very, very careful to it. You know, anytime, that, even if you are preheating your HMD, you want it to still need to heat up more when you add the coals to it. If you already have it at temperature or above temperature, you're gonna have a bad time. So it's smoking, now this part of, one of the very few videos that I'll do, or that I've done anyway, um, that the flavor is actually what we're talking about. So what does it taste like? You taste the chocolate. Uh, like I said, it's not super, super sweet and mixing it at the ratio that I've mixed it at, it's not overpowering. Um, so you taste the chocolate and you definitely taste the orange. Now, Alfacher orange is um, not a super, super, super sweet orange. It's also not a super, super bitter orange. It's it's kind of middle of the road. It's just, it's exactly what you would expect orange to be. It's nothing necessarily to write home about, but it's very, very solid, and it's very, very pleasant in this mix. Mixing it with the tangiers, the orange definitely is, is on the muted side. And anyone who knows those candies that are the chocolate oranges, that are, you know, that look like an orange and you open it up and it's the little pieces of, of chocolate that are shaped like, you know, orange, orange quarters or orange eighths or whatever they do it in. Um, that's exactly what it tastes like. So if you know what that is, that's what this is. It's one of my favorite mixes. Um, I generally only like to use an HMD when I have other stuff going on and I'm working because you don't have to play with it as much. Um, many of you know, and I'll say it now, I am absolutely 100% a foil guy. Um, I, I believe if, you know, if you're an HMD smoker and that's the only way that you smoke and that's really the only way that you've learned to smoke, buy some Reynolds HD and learn how to heat manage with foil. Even if you, after you learn it, you still use your, you know, use your Lotus or your Phoenix or, you know, your MIG, Razor, whatever, whatever it is that you use, even if you still use it all the time, it, you'll get better at heat management. All of my best sessions come from foil, coals on foil. Um, it's easier with an HMD to have a good session, but great sessions come from foil. So um, that's about it as far as to go over for flavor profile. The other thing that I, I wanted to mention just about this method and, and why, I wanted to, why I wanted to do this video and, and to show you guys um, not that this is something that I've invented or anything like that. It, it's something that I learned in like 2009 on Hookah Pro. Um, mixing, specifically Al Fokker, mixes very, very well with Tangiers. Um, if you're someone who wants to get into Tangiers but it has only been smoking blondes and you know, you're, you're worried about how finicky it is, this absolutely helps. It takes away from it being so finicky. Um, it takes away from you know, how, how tough it is to manage the heat, uh, your pack, doesn't matter as much. It's a lot easier to pack than Tangiers is, even though personally, I think, especially if you use the RB Palmer method, Tangiers is easy to pack. Um, once you figure it out, you figure it out. 
but a lot of people do have trouble with it and a lot of people have trouble with the buzz and this cuts down on that so you'll still get some buzz you'll get more buzz much more buzz than you're used to if you're only smoking you know blonde leaf now um, but it won't you shouldn't have that overpowering buzz where you feel like you need to go lay down or you start to feel sick or anything like that this 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 can help with that so for people that want to get into tangiers and you know be one of the cool kids that likes to smoke dark leaf um, seems like a badge of honor a lot of times around around the hookah community um, this is a great way to get into it without it being so scary so yeah that's about it I have some work to do that's why I'm smoking it with the Lotus I, I have some things to take care of here and uh, that's about it for my video so make sure that you uh, like the video subscribe and uh, check us out over on Facebook the hookah lounge is the name of the group So uh, that's about it. Take it easy, guys.